You're tuned into the daily podcast, and this is Long Live the Arts. I'm your host, the Word uh, Shout out to our sponsors, Bangin' 832 Radio. You can check them out at www.bangin832.com. Thank you so much for your support. Shout out to Tamiya's Touch of Care Massage Therapy. To get with life, get a massage, www.tamiyaanderson.com. Make sure that you check out the 35th anniversary concert with the South Park Coalition on September 10, 2022 from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. You can get your tickets on Eventbrite right now. VIP is only $50. If you wait to pay at the door, you'll pay $30. And that's just for general admission. We want to shout out to the Buy Black Marketplace at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. They're located at 5309 MLK Boulevard. And every first and third Saturday from noon to 6, you can buy black buy from black local vendors it's a pop of experience and if you are a business owner and have material make sure you reach out to them because they are always open to getting more information about what else they can expose their audience to you can always go to the dailysmoke.com to watch past videos to subscribe to our youtube channel to share these videos and shows but also you can support the show by donating on cash app tv smoke dollar sign tv smoke Hey y'all. Hey, hey. I'm so happy to introduce y'all to some women in my life who I just find to be one of the most gracious gifts I've been blessed with. Access to incredible women who not only have experienced life in ways I have not imagined, but they've documented it. First, I have PK McCrary, who is just an absolute gift. She is our community grill in the third ward area. She's touching South Park and all of Houston. I'm so happy that you're here. I am excited about being here. I just thought uh, this is my reward for all the hard work I've done this month. Yes, indeed. And we have Priscilla T. Graham. You can visit www.priscillatgram.com to get information on this beautiful historian. But Priscilla, you are just a remarkable figure. She is an amazing accountant. She does not cut any corners. Her integrity speaks for itself, but her work is amazing in the way that she has seen life. Thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you for that great introduction. Are you welcome? <laughs> it's not fake when you actually know. And I don't want to bring nobody on my show, y'all, that I can't speak for and say, like, their work speaks for themselves. How many books have you published, PK? Nine. I'm working on the tenth one. What's the name of the tenth one? The tenth one is Raising Aaron. Um, life that my daughter taught. She was a teacher. Yes, what, what book number are you on, Priscilla? Uh, I'm on number, working on number 36 and number 37 right now. Whoa. Yes, yes. We're in 38 probably. Actually, I'm working on three at the same time right now. Yeah, I remember when you published five at one. Something was like, oh. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but um, I've been working out in, um, I've been working, I'm a co-founder of a nonprofit that's over 25 years old. And actually, this year we decided to go full-blown with, um, doing what we need to do to be a nonprofit, you know, taking it to that next level. And I haven't had opportunity to work on anything except for do that. Um, we just wrapped up yesterday. We had 57 kids enrolled, about an average of 30 something a day. So I'm really happy with our accomplishments, but it's time. It's yeah. So what relaxes you? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, that's an ever changing, that's an ever changing, topic what relaxes me um the same thing that relaxed me a month ago doesn't relax me anymore and what relaxes me at this particular moment right now is absolutely just being home and doing nothing no not using my brain not <laughs> not doing anything just doing nothing even while well, i can watch a movie or something but just doing absolutely nothing where i have to use my brain right at this moment you can turn your brain off. yeah i've been working on doing that yeah mm -hmm. um i'm still working on it yeah it's hard I believe sometimes that helps me it hard it's hard isn't it mm -hmm. yeah but yeah I'm, I'm working on that just being still. just learning how to enjoy myself oh yeah and just do things for me rather than always doing things for other people and not over committing myself to someone else unless i just commit myself to myself 
And so that's what I'm learning. That's a new intention. That is that is very new. That's because I've I've seen you on candid camera, unbeknownst to you, enjoy yourself. Yeah, I've I've seen Priscilla T. Graham, y'all. Boogie, okay, a little bit. I, 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 a I little. Seen, bit. I've seen footage before Snapchat existed of Priscilla T. Graham having a good time. But the the audacity of you to take time to yourself and just be, I, I, I'm rooting for that. I, I like that. And I heard UPK say that Belize is sometimes that space of relaxation for you. It is because um, it's, uh, the place is owned by a black woman who uh, was African descent, truly. And she's a healer. And she is a fabulous cook. And I just feel like my brain is working for me rather than everybody else. But my brain never So when you go to Belize, you go to her house? She, she has an extra house. It's my house. Oh, uh-huh. amen. What's your favorite thing to do when you go? Do you go to the river? Do you sit outside? Do you sleep for an hour? No, I go to the river. And it's, it's just right up the street. But then I go find me some moringa <laughs> and uh, watermelon and fresh sweet corn soups. Those are the three things that I have to have to know I'm in the loop. Mm. Wow. Um, that's cool. That's beautiful. People can WhatsApp me, but only if I'm on the internet, which I turn off. Because <laughs> you detach. Because I detach. How does that help you with your mind? It, it reminds me of who I really am. Because I'm a lot of things to a lot of different people. And it's an innate part of me, like nurturing. I'm a nurturer. But then I find that they've been lining up to be nurtured, and I haven't nurtured myself. And I can feel it leaving me. Yes. You know, you I promise a lot of times you're going to bear witness to the fruit of the labor of individuals who not only preach, but practice. And so for an individual to speak that and to know them personally, I can say like the art of audacity is truly remarkable because if you can do it, that means perhaps those in the same room might aspire to do it too. I have an empty passport, y'all. I got my passport in 2018. I see all these judgmental faces. I have been nowhere, but I have been here. And I am completely been here, but I want to go. Yeah. I do. I have a very dear friend. I'll tell her. She'll be ready for you. She'll be what you need that first bet. Yeah. I know massage therapists that are just wonderful. Really? I know. Being don't be mad to me as such a care if I go get an experience outside of America. It don't count as me. And then you can go without. There may be times that you want to get them. I have one young lady that um, is a poet like yourself. And she was given a uh, dilapidated farm about eight years ago, maybe 10 years ago, took her kids, and now she is teaching farming for people, and she has built two houses where you can go and farm. She said, don't come if you're not ready to work, but come and have a place to stay and farm and help her. It's wonderful. So, uh, to Nora, um, I think you all have even been on the same stage at some point or another, but you all are my one of, I have 10 poets that I listen to. I find them on YouTube. You're one. Tenor's one. Beyonce's one. Uh, then my birthday's tomorrow. I've got to tell she got me. Oh my God, y'all better shout out to this woman. <laughs> Happy How birthday. old are you turning? 69. The nerve, y'all. The nerve. This, this highness in this room. 69 years of freedom. Yes, and so now I'm planting trees that I may never sit under, but I will be remembered for the tree. Oh, yeah. Amen. And I am intentional about that. And I was wondering with Miss Priscilla, you know, don't you realize that you just have to be intentional about carving out? What people will know about you. That dad. What only about. certain people will know about you. Yeah, Amen. That is, that is most simply the truth. That is the truth. I'm essential about my life. You know, there's an art of listening, right? So I'm 38 years old. And I'm, I'm the youngest person in this room. I feel like it's imperative that you always find yourself at some point in your week to be the youngest person in the room and listen. 
because the art of listening is truly a depiction of grace and patience. And to exercise that means I am like a kid in a candy store because you women, <laughs> Miss Pierce, Priscilla, and PK. I get so much thanks. My gratitude abounds just for the grace of you accepting an invitation to sit with me on the sofa. Like, y'all don't even understand that that's the degree of a thank you. I get to touch these women. They hug me. They love me. They came. And at the same time, we are sitting in a space that has been called to be something great. This is the wolf's den, okay? Now, you're listening to The Daily Smoke, and this is Long of the Arts, but how can we not create in the spot of greatness and creatives? And I wanted to bring you here not only because I want you to hear these powerful women speak, but I want you to speak greatness in this space because nothing that has been constructed without intention can fall if you allow it to stand. And so on the words of your wisdom, each of you, what can you say in the art of production can be done in this space for those who may never meet you? Well, this is a teaching tool, a teaching moment. And... I think we miss them because we're not listening. But what I try to encourage is when someone says something, I don't automatically respond. Because I want it to resonate also in my brain and what is supposed to be said, not what I want to say, but what may be being asked for them. And you get a chance to play what you just asked me over in your head. And from there, we take it and we rebuild it, we shape it, and make it what it's supposed to be. So that's what this is. Uh, it's becoming what it's supposed to be. Yeah, so what, I, what I've learned um, living this life is that words have power. They have meaning. Catch that. Yes. It's an episode, y'all. And so words can change the direction of your life. You might think that you're on a path, but someone can speak words to you that impact your soul and you do a U-turn and you don't even know that it's happening. Uh, and that's what happened to me. Actually, in 1990, I want to say 1994, at a juvenile justice conference, I, had to, I got out of the military, I decided to go back to school full time. And I wanted to take it slow, and I went to junior college. I moved. I was in Killeen. I moved to Austin. And I went back to school. I was only taking a couple of hours, a couple of, couple of um, you know. And then I took this class, political science class, had to take it. And one of the things at the end, it was taking us to this conference with this juvenile justice. And Sheila Jackson Lee was just beginning to run for office. And she spoke at this particular conference at the end. And her words were so powerful. And I never seen a black woman speak like that. Mm. And with the power and in the words that she was saying. And I was like, man, wow. And I said, well, we had to write papers. And I said, well, what I got at the conference is that I need to change what I'm doing. I need to do something to give back. Because I'm just all living about living life. I wasn't even caring about nobody and nothing to give back to anything. But I learned that I needed to give back. And that particular moment in time changed my entire life that I did a U-turn. That's how I got into servant leadership. And then I ended up coming here. I meeting someone in Houston area. And I ended up moving here and I went to go to a black college. Texas Southern University Damn. and P and P B were the two. Texas Texas Southern was cheapest. So I ended up coming and then I started volunteering. Started volunteering because I said I want to give back some right. volunteering. And I did that for a little while. And then I said, well, I need to get some experience so I can learn about how to work with kids, how to do different things. And I went to the YMCA just as a part-time job. Mm -hmm. And from that, um, I had a job that I wanted. The job was in Arcola at Jake Dell Community Center. I wanted that outreach job. I worked at Anderson Elementary for a while with the Y that was there. And that summer, I got that job. I got that job at Jake Dell. And then from there... I got to the point where I needed a full-time job. Five for a full-time job was with the YMCA for 18 and a half years. You understand me? And that never was a path. And my family wasn't happy about that, about that path because I had gone to school. I, ever since I was eight years old, I knew I wanted to be an accountant. So that's what I was preparing for, to be an accountant. But when I got with all the Sheila Jackson Lee and the kids and all of that, and giving back and certain leadership, 
it was too late. I was like, I didn't want to be an accountant anymore. I wanted to teach. Well, couldn't get all of that. So the YMCA was the next best thing. Actually, the school system called me the day after the YMCA. I said, whoever called me first is where I'm going to work. <laughs> Why call me first? And so, but everything I've done from that time when I made that U-turn has been calculated, not by me, but by the great creator has calculated. Because I had to come to a point where I said, I can't make the decisions for this life because it wasn't working well with me. <laughs> so I just said, Lord, wherever you, whatever you lead me, I'll go. Whenever it's time for me to go from one to every situation, however it is, good or bad or indifferent, I'm going to go. And I and I've lived by that since then. And so I've I've been on I've been on this great path. I got fired from my job in 2013 from YMCA. Best thing ever happened to me. Best thing that ever happened to me. Because I would not have written 35 books. I would not be doing the things that I'm doing right now. I would not be investing in the community, investing in the community, or doing any of this thing. The what was killing me. But I was working for somebody else. Why are you going to put all your time and energy working for somebody else to make money when you can put all your time and energy in your own stuff and make money? That's a whole show. That's a whole show. So um, that, that's what I mean. Words are so powerful. So are the words of accountability, right? Because okay. the accountant takes account for how things are spent, but Ooh. you no longer have to account for wasting your time. And it's, it's, it's time. truly remarkable. This woman has referenced historical spaces and individuals whose names were not even known. Like she made their lives matter. And it's one thing to hop on a bandwagon and be like, Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah. Not if you don't value your own. Oh, but I appreciate, yeah. I absolutely appreciate you. Y'all, I've interviewed Priscilla T. Graham three times, okay? Yes, yes. July 5th, 2020 was one of the most extraordinary experiences because before that moment, I'd only seen Priscilla T. Graham in past. <laughs> I'd be at TSU doing some poetry. There goes that camera lady. Go to the Gregory School. Girl. There goes that lady again with that little ponytail bun thing going on. Like, she always somewhere with the camera. And I told the guys from Daily Smoke that these shows needed to be archived at the school. I was like, oh, y'all got to be Priscilla. Not only does Priscilla know how to do it, she does it herself. Like, everything she documents, she keeps. Somebody someday is going to know she existed and not have to account for wasting their time and that is so remarkable you know some people feel like and it's not a jab on people who have one kid or five but some people who don't bear children carry them through life mm -hmm. and and the impact that you have made on children in the whole entire community of the Y. Every student, every parent, every teacher, every influence you have had a reach on. Like, I don't necessarily believe they are silent because it doesn't matter. I don't think they value thank you as much. Right? Like, gratitude, gratitude can abound, but people not know how to. They don't know. And you know, um, so here, here's, the, here's the rest of the story about the YMCA, okay? So I told you about how all that happened. But with the why is that I'm always going to be history. Because first of all, the billionaire that the wise name, well, that has a part in the Houston, Texas YMCA, see, I opened that YMCA and helped raise $11 million for that, which we only thought fell short $2 million because we raised nine before I left there. And so I'm in the middle of holding the signals. So you ain't never going to cut me out of the picture. Hello. Okay, as long as he over there, and his wife is there, I'm going to be, I'm going to always be part of history because that is very historical. Did I ask for that? No. Lord gave me that. Prepared me for that. And when my time was over, it was time for me to go and go do some other great things. I see and, why you've been there. Hello. I see now why you've been there. It's the same thing with me. A story needs to be told. Yes. Oh, yes. That story needs to be told. So, guess what? After all these years with the YMCA, guess who comes calling? YMCA. Come back. Hey, can you do this? No problem. How much? The same, <laughs> you know, the same the same one that I was in the room with in 2013 that fired me? I was, hey, how are you? <laughs> because you hold no power over None me. at all. None. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping me be great. 
the art of reflection real quick okay you are tuned into the daily smoke this is long the the arts i just want to tell you how much of your story is mine not in the degree of experience but the impact about a month ago i was at the grocery store picking up some it, it was mother's day weekend mm -hmm. i was getting some last minute trinkets for my mama for mother's day because the gift that i had purchased she wanted to postpone so i couldn't go into handy and i ended up at hcb in missouri city and I walked right in front of the man who was in HR at FedEx when I told him I was being mistreated. Yes. I let him know I was being discriminated against. I let him know this was a problem. I even gave him three or four options of making it right. Mm -hmm. And he would not look at me. And it was like a deer in headlights when I saw him at HCB and I felt powerful because even though I felt like they took me from me, even though I did write a book called Empty Me because of it, I realize I am exactly where I'm supposed to be and I give thanks to that because if you hold on to the occurrence and let it be what happens and you don't experience what is happening, you miss out on life and that you cannot get back. So I must agree, like it was the best thing that happened to you because 35, 38 about to be books later, all the photos, all the operations that you have literally constructed in all of the rooms and spaces you have stood in because you could. Yeah, it, it's definitely a time as this that we can say thank you, God, because it was necessary. I think there's one more thing you know, this What's up? Time to do this. They weren't careless. She was dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and I, and you know like sometimes when you're in it you can't see right. you can't see the ending but just because you're in a situation at the moment there's always light at the oh, end because on. we just don't understand it and it's gonna be okay you know yeah. you just got to get through it you just yeah. can't give up you just got to keep pushing yeah. and understand that you know what i'm going through is now because there's something great hello i'm about to be great i'm about to explode you know, you got to go through that so you can learn. Because what you're doing is learning at yes. each step and stage. It might be bad. So what? You're learning. You learn how to deal with it. So the next time it might be a little harder, but it won't be as hard for you to get through it because you learn over here. But you got to get through each stage. But it's not the end. As long as you wake up every day with this breath in your body, you got an opportunity to be great. Every day. Every time. Every time. Yes. Every time. And every moment is a step. Yes. Great. Yes. Yes. Because yes. God is great. Amen. And, and that's what flows through you. Yes. And I, I, right here, I just think that this is an opportunity to think about what we want the world to look like. What right. that right for. We do it our, with our words. We do it with our, our voices. But the best gift we can give ourselves is to take care of ourselves so we can stay mm -hmm. For the period that's needed i went on um, a journey in 2020 and i think that was one of the last times we were it, the pandemic was started and i came to st john's and we were talking and when i left that was the last time that i went out for almost a year are you serious when you're on my show I don't. and part of it was my doctor said to me, we don't know what this pandemic really is, but it will kill you. Because <laughs> I have lupus. Oh, yes, God, yes. It will kill you. Stay away from me. Me? Stay away. That's your love language. <laughs> <laughs> we stay away from people. But then it hit. And it started hitting at home. People getting it. And people dying. Yes, yes. And we don't even know all their names. You know, the age quilt. People yes. made quilts. Nobody's making quilts pieces for the number of people who have lost their lives. And now we realize that some lives that were lost before we knew about a pandemic it was because of this pandemic. I don't want to live in a world where we're not concerned about everybody's health. I don't want to live in that world. Mm -hmm. But I am. And you said something earlier about servant leadership. I think that people don't understand that if they're in leadership, they're a servant. Hello? They're servants, yes. <laughs> That's servant. Yes. And about the only thing that you can do is not about you being in charge. You need to share that leadership 
with others because people have things that you don't know, you know, and you cannot ignore. That's the person that tells you that's the door to go out of and the government's coming through the other way. And you don't want to listen to him because he's not the leader. We don't want these fabricated leaders either because leadership has nothing to do with your money or any of those things. And a lot of times people tell us who our leaders are. The leaders start at the lowest level possible in your community. Well, now and leaders are picking their constituents. No. Yeah, that's, that's, not, how it goes. that's, not, how, that's not how it goes. You know, um, and there's a lot of people in leadership positions. They're not my leaders. Those are the leaders y'all are telling us that are the leaders. But I'm, not I'm, leading. I'm, a, I'm a leader within myself. Yes. Because I know that there's things that I can do to serve and help and educate and speak that word that can help others. You know, we might be grooming the next president. We don't never know who we're in the room with, with these kids. We don't know who they can be. But even with people, just anybody, I always believe that anyone deserves the greeting of the day or smile. Because you never, even, even, even if it's a person that's homeless, because you never know what that and how that would impact their lives. And so, so we get so caught up into materialistic things and status that we forget these are people and human beings. You know, um, all this this materialistic marketing that they show you and say that's not real life. Those things are not even happening. And so, even with people that live those type of lives that they're able to get to that next level and have all this money. And then when they fall down, where they don't have money, well, why are you looking at us to help you when you didn't help people when you could? Do you know how much money a million dollars can do to help someone, and especially like small organizations? You know what a million dollars can do? Yeah. Always, they always give you, we have people that will sell out the whole race, everybody, for pennies, because they're not giving their people pennies. We're the ones who are getting pennies, and they get the millions. They might give you some thousands of dollars. But they're the ones who's getting millions, and we're doing the dirty work. I'm not putting myself in dirty work because I'm not going to do dirty work for anybody. But I'm just saying, though, you know, it's important that we understand that everybody deserves to be treated with humility. Yes. Empathy. Dignity. It doesn't matter, yeah. you know. And you can smile. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't cost you anything to smile or say hello. It costs you nothing. Just an action. But if you ugly inside, it's going to be ugly on the outside. So that's your ugliness just coming out when you don't do stuff like that. It's either ugliness or ignorance. Because some people are so fooled by thinking like their words have no value. They don't nobody care if they speak. You know, some people got so much to say about Sheila Jackson Lee. But at least she stood, she stood up, she said something, and she's doing things. Like even how you were saying like you listened to her speak and, and the power of her tone convicted you. I'm sitting at TSU's uh, convocation, I think, in December 2010. The weekend, it was December 6th, because it was the weekend after I filed my 501c3, and mm -hmm. I was just like, she talked about victorious and, you know, doing things for the people, and I'm like, yo, you are literally speaking the definition of my name. I have been called to do this in real life. Right, right. And, and I told her what I was going to do, and she showed up. I'm not going to play with politics and talk about how it ain't shit, because it is. There is a purpose to it, but some of y'all only repeat what you read, and the media going to feed you what you eat. If you're not getting real live content from people who have stood outside in the heat for hours and hours and hours saying, hey, vote this way, then you can't really talk to me about nothing. I'm not going to listen. But for those who have something to say, these are the moments you pay attention mm -hmm. to the art and the beauty of listening because I know you know. And because we keep growing. Oh, yeah. Man, you know, with those words and how you can set it actually, you know, I can take up that mantle and say, what do you mean to do that? Or come on, let's go talk to this person about doing it. And that is my real life question because if, if somebody gonna talk for some people, I'd rather it be somebody who means it and can back it up based on some sense and not bullshit. And at the same time, if you're not gonna be here in 30 years, I might. And if I am, I cannot not acknowledge whose shoulders I stand on, right? Like I, I'm. Y'all don't really seem to understand. Like, I am so excited. I just want to sit here and absorb it. But since you said that, please tell me. Because I don't know what to do with my gifts but to give them. And I'm of service 100% of my life. But I also know I was not called to be broke. And I'm not supposed to be at somebody's job 10 hours a day not feeling like I'm going to do what I'm supposed to. But I do what I can in those spaces. And, and, and they notice. And, and that's cool for ego, but it don't matter. You know, like, I'm not going to complain that I get texts at 6 a.m. when I'm not even to be at work because I'm always working. I'm always serving. But... What would you have 
give me I'm, I'm here for it what's up first of all we are called to tell these nonprofits that are out here getting money if they aren't doing us a favor we're doing them exactly a favor. and we have got to start not just building coalitions partnering you have this i have that so let's partner and let's <laughs> take the grant and use it so that we can all have it. what the system does is it rewards who they think they, they like you were talking about, they tell you who the leaders are. Every time I get a survey, so who's the leader in your commission? I put Sister Mama Sonny. Yeah, shout out to Sister put Mama Sonny. We yeah. love you. You know, I mean, I start putting the people that I see doing the work. I don't care that you got a name, director, or even congressman. And I love she, and I loved Mickey for the things that they did do. But I also know the system can't let them do what they need to do. And they need to come to us so that we can help them. That way, the politicians that are against them don't have a all. Chance. They don't stand a chance. Yeah, no. And they don't know who we all are. And they're more of us than they are of them. We are the global majority. Mm -hmm. The skin color, the smell of them. The it's skin color. Yeah. We have that. And you can't use it. You have to be handed it, knowing that we can trust you. There's some politicians I can't trust with my stuff. And I, uh, you know, last year when my daughter got beat up and arrested and uh, called the perpetrator, $35,000 bail, $20,000 in legal fees, and I thought, I'm PK. Hello? Hey, hey, hey. How come people quit talking to you? And the truth of the matter is, they quit talking because they're scared. One person said, because you could fix it, but they're not going to like the way you fix it. And they're right. Because you have, I hold myself accountable. I hold myself accountable. And I know that there was another way to have handled it, and I was trying that way. But at some point, I had to come on the bed. That was my child. Yeah. Yes. Always. And when there's she no, got no problem. Right. And when she got out of jail, 36 hours after being doused with gasoline and sitting in gasoline drawers, literally, literally she came out. She said, "Mommy, there were too many young people, 16 and 15, and telling them they were adults, and you can look at that baby and tell." There wasn't no baby, and I want a place for them to come. And so that was the beginning of Sam's heart. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, like in real life, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron didn't even like respond to being soused in gasoline or mishandled by officers who were supposed to uphold a certain decorum. She was, she she was more concerned about what was going on and what was more mattering. Because is it not the trust of she was called to be in that cell so she could make well a problem that is not known. I got this project called Pros and Cons. P R O S E. Because people who have been subjected to the, the scrutiny and the abuse and the mishandling of tools need to be heard in a way that art can actually convey that is very effective. But if you don't know what it's like to have that bruise on your wrist from a handcuff that was not invited. If you don't know what it's like to be literally handed your whole ass by somebody who can say what to do with it and there's nothing you can do about it, you don't really understand. But there are individuals who have paid their debt to society and they're still walking around like they're in debt and, and being treated wrongly because of it. And, and I have an opinion about it, but I also offer the space for that taboo topic on a Tuesday. But but yes, all, all, of, all of the degrees of that. But my question more so, okay, for those who actually want something more productive to do with life, what does that look like? Because if you're not going to be here for the coming of it, if, if it's just going to be the woman who becomes herself sitting in that seat under the tree you planted 50 years ago, what does she need to know? Well, first of all, she needs to know that when I turned 60, I created a 50-year play. Amen. I, Amen. And, I, and I've done it in 10-year increments. And the thing was that I wanted to start working with young people and preparing them with marketing, public relations, graphic design as a tool set for anything they want to do in life. There's nothing you do that you don't have to market, that you don't have to have public relations and people who know you 
and that there's not a graphic. You know, I'm looking at the wolf's day, day, day. And I'm going like, okay, yeah, because we're family. Wolves are, are family oriented. Yes. Right. Yes. So I realized that 20 years ago, I met Lakota grandmothers, Cherokee grandmothers, and some of them were black, Cherokee and Lakota. And I learned about the Iroquois law, law. What you do today affects the next seven generations. Mm-hmm. not that here, the seven. seven. So we've already impacted these generations behind us. Those kids we were with, we took them in our hands to give them the tools that they need. And we're not letting go and making it a one-time only thing. Now they're in our sight and we're following. But the seventh generation strategy says we don't have to try and fit in with the structures already here. This is a new structure. And it's yours. We get to make this the best it can be. However, we have to do that with integrity and honesty and let people know that seven generations from now, little kids will know these tools already because we're going to have apprentices. We're going to have people that, my daughter always went to work with me. They'd sit up under my desk sometimes while I was doing legal stuff because if school was out, they were with me. And even when somebody said, I don't think your kids should be here, I said, well, okay, I can make it. And I did. <laughs> For real. And I worked temporary until they got grown. You know why? Because I would tell the people that I went to work temporary. Temporary Workers Handbook said, you can take credit for whatever I do great. And you can blame me for whatever, whatever I do wrong. wrong. <laughs> but it's not going to affect the next job I go to. I, it's, you can have it any way you want to. If you want me to do it wrong, I'll do it wrong all day long. So I'm going to spend it today. I get a chance. But in that time that for temporary, I learned how to do graphics. I learned how to do databases. I mean, I had a degree in political science. I learned how to do all these little things. And so that's what I've been teaching them. You know what those kids did? You know, Miss P.K.? I like what you're teaching us, but I need to bring my mama in here because she's making dog or she's writing a book. That's why the generational aspect, we think we're teaching backwards. We're Life goes not backwards, or nor tarries on tomorrow. Our children come through us, but they're not from us. And so if you aren't giving them the efficacy, I'm not saying, I told my daughter all the time, Mama, that's not fair. Maybe if life were fair, you to come here with a job. Instead, you came here broke, hungry, and naked. How fair was that to me? Say you're all this looking to be like. <laughs> I didn't ask to be born. I said, oh, contrary, but you must have. Because the Bible says God knew your name before you were twinkling in my eye. So what that says to me is, and especially the way I spelled your name. Come on, come on, come on. And God were up there plotting and saying, Slow I, down. Want her, I want her for my mother. <laughs> and Aaron thought about it for a while. But she, I said, God knew nobody else could handle you with me. Because now I realize I have all the tools. Oh, yes. To be her mother. And most parents do, but they get afraid. Or they themselves are damaged. And we have to take care of what we see before us. We went and took some kids home last week. They're sleeping on the floor trying to get ready to sleep. I called my friend. She gave us 10 beds. 10 beds. Now I gotta find somebody to put them together. But <laughs> I'm I'm doing that now. It won't be much. But the point is that our strategy has to be for ending the structures that are not working. And the only way to end them, you can't blow them up, 
No terrorism. Creative. We create destruction. Because we can do with a little or a lot if these people are really uh, Jeff Bezos doesn't have 24 hours in the day to do work. He has 100,000 employees 24 hours to do his work. We've got to have people currency. And we've got to make that currency more valuable than the dollar bill. We know how to take a dollar and make sure everybody gets something to drink. We know how to take two dollars and make sure the other person gets one. We know how to do that. And keep on moving. It's called boiling water and sugar for the tea sit pack Kool-Aid and everybody got a little slush cup. I promise. It's a whole stretch. It's the stone food story. And and that's already a story that's been told. So it's in our library, our tool chest. And we need to make these cool tool chests me see now that I know that she's beat me in the number of books. I don't know if we beat me in the number of words, beat me in the number of books. I got an idea for you. And I think we should do a 365 daily affirmation book with the words of every woman that you have met. Just taking a quote, it might be Sedona Truth, to Zora Neale Hurston, or Lena Horne, or, or, or Harriet Tubman. And you take that quote and you think about what it means to you, and then you write a letter to the person that you don't know because this is the tree. Write it to the person you don't know. It's going to come and sit under your work. The tree is not literal, just literal. Even though I'm planting trees, it's figurative. Mm -hmm. Your words, when they roll through me, I know that I've been given a gift. I've been given a gift. Words of wisdom, pearl. And I don't have to wrestle with the pig anymore. Both get dirty and the pig likes it anyway. But, he likes it anyway. Yeah. And I'm not putting pearls before So, um, that's very interesting. I think, I think the seven generation, what you just said about seven generations is very interesting. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Freedom Sound. Have you ever been to Freedom Sound? Where? Freedom Sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not okay. there. So, oh, Freedom, yes, yes, yeah. Freedom Sound. Freedom okay. Sound. Freedom Sound. So Freemantown has the brick streets at um, the crossroads are actually at Wilson and Andrew. Right. You've been on the you've been on the bricks. So I'm gonna tell I mean, I'm just gonna tell this, but you have to come and actually experience it. So um, probably maybe over a year ago, the lady that they were gonna, that Biden was gonna appoint to the uh, National Trust, mm -hmm. like you know, preservation. She came, she hadn't been appointed yet, but she was the one that they were so she had came to Houston to visit and had her daughter, I guess, for the summer. And one of the other people brought her down and was showing her around. And I actually happened to be walking Bridge Street that day. Had been walking Bridge Street that day. And just the divine just gave me something that people you can't go find a notebook, you can't point to it, but you put it in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And when I met the lady that day, I told her what that was and then so at the brick streets at the brick streets at andrews and wilson at the crossroads is connected with north south east and west so in the middle of the brick streets if you was in the center it has a point and from the point you branch out from each where you turn north south east or west it branches out into a triangle and at the end of the triangle is a base that's what it branches out to if you stand in the middle you can see everything i'm telling you how they did, did that, I don't know, but let me finish telling you. Now, this is what the divine gave me. Our people that look like us are from Africa. We know we come from the continent. In the continent of Africa, you have the Egyptian pyramids. Egyptian pyramids have a point, four triangles in the base. Mm -hmm. If I was standing in the middle of the streets in the historic Freeman's town, what I just told you about them, and I took it and pulled it up from the point, it will be the pyramids. And the other thing about it is that we didn't lose our culture. We just found other ways to embed our culture right. into what we had. And right. if you go and we, we stand and I show you, you'll see it. That's what the divine gave me. That is their, that's our culture. Then they just did it differently and embedded it I mean, the pyramids. I got to show you. Oh, no, she's the only guy to take you on. Yes. And so, and so that's, that was what was through my spirit. And so then I was like, I told a couple more people. And I was like, y'all think I should include it in my story? I'm like, yeah. 
You should include it in your story because it was given to you. That was That's a right. gift given to you, and That's you right. can't just sit and be silent about it. Uh -uh, uh -uh. So whenever I do tours, so you got to take my tour. So when you take my tour, it's different from other tours. All of my tours are different. We we have like the cultural experience tours, and it's based off um, our experiences and all that stuff. Uh, and so the that, whole thing, the yeah. whole thing, the whole thing, the whole thing, the book, the encouragement, all of the process, stuff. the project, the working together, unification, all of these things. Yeah. Because we sat together on the sofa. I've been in the same room with both of y'all. Y'all know on like Fridays at like eight o'clock in the morning, the strongest women in Houston meet for breakfast <laughs> and they pray together and they talk about what they gonna do. It's a whole thing. Like some of y'all live like frivolously. Let's just see what happens next. No. The strongest women in Houston actually have a plan. Have an intention. Have a gift. And those of us who are called to be present get to experience the gift firsthand. I just witnessed the art of production. I'm looking forward to reading that book. Because if any woman has inspired either of you to do something great, I want to give thanks to them. I want to give thanks to you because... We wouldn't have this, we wouldn't have this, we wouldn't have this, we wouldn't have this. This is what we're the gathering. I call it the gathering. And I talk of the gathering at my 50th year. Well, I was 50 years old. I looked around and realized how many people that I knew when I was younger that were coming back into my life. My elders that were kind of leaving me, but leaving me with things. And I realized that it was a gathering. Whether or not the gathering is here on earth or in heaven or whatever it is, ancestors, there's a gathering. And so when I went to Cancun and swam in the river and watched all those faces come through the water mm. and, and fade into my body where my feet were, I thought I was hallucinating to myself. Amen. I saw my mom, who comes to visit me every once in a while when things get a little rough. But she comes with a suitcase, like, okay, go to the bank, start the account, do the deal. And I realized how much she fixed everything. everything. She comes with a suitcase. She comes with a suitcase because she's not staying. Yep. She knows she got to go back. Visiting. Whatever. She comes to visit me. And my daughter says it's been happening to her, too, and it's less happening to me. So... You know, the spiritual, but the mental and the physical, we have to all, we have to take care of it all. It's a wonderful chiropractor uh, named Dr. Baines from the Islands. He was a ping pong champion. He's six foot seven. He's the first chiropractor. <laughs> he can basically pick me up, crack my back. I can drive better now because I can turn my... Yeah. Oh. I didn't even realize just how stiff and tough, you know, and then the acupuncture, and then a doctor who loves me and doesn't rush me when I come in there. Come on. Those are big deals, right? Not even to rush past that, but there, there is an art, especially when talking about the pandemic and the way in which money flows. If you're going to spend some money, y'all, give us a daily smoke, go buy some books for people who actually have something to say worth learning. But at the same time, like make good investments. Yeah. Because you know, your 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 wellness is very imperative. I, I need you sustained. I need you hydrated. I need you working. I need all of your organs functioning. I need not no pain to take you from you. So I what do you need? Let me know. And at the same time, I need no film to run out, no battery to die. I need you to always stay tapped in because see the the whole thing is I know how great y'all are. Y'all have experienced me become great, and, and the people get to experience the awareness of the greatness. Like, when you surround yourself with good things, there is no bad thing to take you down or to make you feel like darkness cannot be enlightened with your own opening of eye. But but the, the beauty of, of these conversations, this, this is something you could actually have access to if you picked up a book <laughs> they wrote. <laughs> so, I have a comment about what you said about don't let any um like the you know the video like you know the the chat you know whatever but see i had an awareness about that an awakening about that too is that you know i've spent so much time running behind other people trying to capture their stories that i haven't spent enough time capturing my own and so here is 
a taboo. You don't have to worry about me running behind anybody, capturing their stories. Now, if you want me to, I will, but I'm not going to run behind you because it's not my job to tell your story. It's your job to want somebody to hear your story. You know what I'm saying? So you got to tell it yourself. And so I've just come to the conclusion is that I have so much left to give and so much to create. I don't have time to do that. I'm not time running behind you no more. No. You know what I'm saying? I got, I have stuff to do. And that's creative. And if you, if they don't invite you to the table, create your own. Come on. And I'm in the process of on. my own table. Come on. Yes. That's a piece that says, bring the chair. Oh, yeah. And I'll pass I have a red. table in my trunk right now, y'all, with four stools snapped in the bottom. And I got a chair I got my and a table, table in there in my trunk. Hello. And it's comfy. <laughs> it's mine. Right. You know yes. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I travel with it. I keep yeah. me a chair and because if I need to set something up, I can set it up by myself. I don't, I don't need no problem. <laughs> but if you want to set your chair with me, you can. Yeah. But I don't need you to. Right. right. But I create my own table. And so. But not only do you not need them, you're not even afraid that you do. I think sometimes that we think we need them. I had a woman that I worked with in an international organization. And she called me last year and she said, I started following you when you were at a place called Row House. Mm-hmm. 2014. And she said, and I gave him a few thousand dollars to them for you. Because of you. I, I didn't want to, you know, make a test of myself. She said, now I'm following you and, and you you shifted to doing things with 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 your daughter, and I'm, I'm hearing about it. So I said, you, know, you want to donate to that? We, we're happy to have you give your money. She said, it's not my money, it's just money. Hey. Why, why are we assigning it? That's a possession. It's just money. It's just money. And what do you need? She had her own business for years on top of being a, devote, a woman with a disability. Um, where she always had to have a cane. Mm-hmm. And she wants to do things with her money, but she wants it to count. Because I told her I never do. And it's okay. It's it's serious. It's okay, because if that doesn't come off me, that doesn't come back on me. And obviously I didn't need it because I did everything that I said I was gonna do. Y'all, y'all gotta understand, like, you're you're listening to some truths, and the sound might have been a little uh, indicative of some brown noise, because sometimes it's those moments where you just don't have access to everything, but those who are used to, to experience the, the shift, the mowing is necessary, the landscaping is required, there are rules and regulations to adhere to, but for the people in the room, I know you've heard that power. I, I'm, I'm ready because I didn't just start thinking about it. No, it's been our conversation. Who wants to pray? Oh, y'all looking at me? Okay, no problem. I don't have. I don't have a problem. You've been listening praying. to the uh, the people's podcast. This is the Daily Smoke every day at seven p.m. Tuesday and Thursday. You can catch me for Taboo Tuesdays or along with the arts on Thursdays. We have been here with the gracious facility Graham and PK McCrary. and still in the back we've got Mrs. Pierce because her presence just feels like love. Come on and close us out. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for this moment that we get to spend with such powerful people in your presence i can feel you in this space and it just soothes my soul and lord thank you for everyone that's here continue to bless them and lead and guide them and have your hand in whatever they do so that they might impact the people that's here in our city our state our country and our world Lord, please continue to just to flow in them and keep them on the right track and give them the tools and the necessities that they need to be great and that your greatness can be seen in them when they're in the presence of others. And Lord, please give us traveling graces as we leave this place and continue to bless this podcast so that it's able to reach millions as it continues to grow and thrive from where it is now and get the voice and word out to the people. 
in your son Jesus name I pray Lord amen amen, amen. all of that yeah.